Hello and welcome to another MI How To video. My name is Tom Clark, I am your host, and on today's How To, we're gonna show you how to keep your gearbox healthy. And helping us out from Sumitomo Drive Technologies is Adam Soder. Adam, welcome back. Thank you very much, great to be back. Good to have you here, man. And uh, we got a sick gearbox. We gotta, we, we gotta keep it healthy and, and you're the doctor, you're the guy. So, you know, if I've got my gearbox, where would I start? The first step would be checking your manufacturer's specific operation and maintenance manual. Okay. From there, you get some great reference for all the specifics you need to know about your specific gearbox. So all the man, all the gearboxes are in here. I got to look it up and go. Oh, there it is. And, you have this and, size, correct? And that would tell you everything that we need to know mm -hmm. about it. Good reference. All right. So we found that out. What would be the first thing we check? Oil level. Okay. So all gearboxes, just like your car, have to have oil in them. Your car has a dipstick. Some gearboxes have a dipstick, but in other cases, they'll have a sight tube similar to this. Mm -hmm. They check the oil level, make sure it's running in the middle of the specified range. Again, it would say it in the maintenance manual. Right. Once it's, if it's too high, you drain some. Too low, you add some. Okay. What's next? Next would be oil quality. So right. you take that sample tube over there. Now you would fill that up with oil from the reducer. I'm glad you said oil. Okay. <laughs> and when you fill it up, you send it out to a third-party company, and they would do their analysis on it. Uh, what wear metals, what dirt, debris, things like that, what components, and from there you can tell what components are actually worn down in the gearbox based on the type of metal. Okay. Do they do steroids like for professional sports? They might. Depends who you go to. They might? They might. Okay. Yeah. Watch out, guys. Okay. What's next? <laughs> the next would be noise. Now, there's a couple different ways. That the quick way, for depending on what's in your toolbox, would be actually a screwdriver. You'd put the end of the screwdriver on the component you're trying to listen to and put it up, put the other end up to your ear. Is this a joke? No, not at all. Okay, where's the camera? Where's the... <laughs> oh, wait, I know where the camera is. You're not getting punked. Seriously? You would do that? Mm hmm You can listen through there and you can listen for any specific noises. Some pinging, banging, knocking, screeching, things like that. You'd be able to hear it in there. I'm going to try that at home, mm -hmm. just to see. Okay. So the stethoscope would be another way to do the same noise yeah, diagnosis. Yeah, I mean, I'm sitting here and I'm like, I don't know why I would use that, but I guess not everybody cares. What Depends did you Depends what say? you have. Huh? Speaking of the microphone. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, to me that would make more sense and I, I would be able to really right. tell what's going wrong. Right, you can earbuds. isolate it where specifically coming from. Okay. But All screeching, right. banging, knocking, any loud noises like that, there's a definite problem with their gearbox. Gotcha. Okay. Explain. The next would be temperature. All so right. we want to make sure that the unit's not running too hot. So we'd start with an infrared thermometer similar to this one. Mm -hmm. you, hold the un you hold it up to the unit, press the button. Yeah, there's the, the laser. Laser comes on, it tells you the surface temperature of the gearbox. You really you see are a the, doctor. Yeah. We got stethoscopes and temperatures and <laughs> you nice. see what the surface temperature I got is now. This pain right here. No. Okay. Call me back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next? So once you have the service temperature, you reference what it should be. So how hot is too hot is a question we get a lot. So we go by AGMA standards, depending on your manufacturer, but our, we go, Sumitomo goes by AGMA, which allows for 100 degrees Fahrenheit over ambient temperature, up to 200 degrees. Anything over 200 degrees, there's something major going on in most cases. From there, a thermal imaging gun would be the next step, because this takes an actual picture in thermal image and tells you exactly what is hotter than the rest. All right, with one you, picture. you'd want to inspect that right away. Right. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next would be vibration analysis. So we have a handheld vibration meter here. Right. You take the vibration sensor, mount it onto the reducer while it's in operation. Now from there you can analyze all the data. You can trend it, see what's going on, and try to nail down exactly what is specifically causing the vibration with some vibration analysis. You can send it to a third party or what have you. Okay. Now with all this, it's all going to be part of a uh, predictive maintenance or preventative maintenance plan or a schedule. So you'd want to do it monthly, weekly, what have you, depending on your plan. One-time readings with all this information, right. you could essentially miss something. If it's consistently hot or consistently vibrating, we have an issue. Correct. Okay. Then you know something's wrong. You have one more animal over there. Right. Now, that, now to put all this together, this item here monitors all this stuff constantly. Why 24 hours a day, seven then? days Why a week. Why didn't we just start with that? This is the, I guess you could say this is the new new technology. This is the industry 4.0, industrial okay. internet of things. This is where the industry is going. Okay. So they call this a condition monitoring system. Right. This does vibration, temperature, oil level, all that tied into this system with various sensors and things like that. And from there, alarms would go off, emails can be sent, uh, anything to not notify the user of a potential issue way before it happens gotcha. to prevent downtime. That's the whole goal. Well, doctor, thank you. That was some Alrighty. good stuff right there. Adam, thank, you, thank very you very much. We appreciate it. Adam Soder, he is with Sumitomo Drive Technologies. That's pretty impressive right there. If you have any questions about anything, contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location. They'll be able to help you out. Uh, as you notice, we didn't have any PPE, but we didn't really need it. We were just talking about this stuff. But if you're physically doing this, yeah, wear the proper PPE for whatever the job calls for, because safety is priority number one. Priority two, check out other great videos like this. The website is mihowto.com.
probably find me there, Tom Clark, as your host. Thanks for watching.